Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I'll send you that guide for free. Jared Pullen, Fronos Photo. Dot com, and this is a preview of two new Canon crop sensor cameras. We got the R7 and the R10. They are officially official as of now. Now we have a hands-on preview for you because Canon flew us out to Orlando for basically one day of shooting with two cameras. Yeah, we didn't have a lot of time to do it and we have a quick turnaround because we got home Friday and this video is out on a Monday. So not a lot of time to get it done. That's why this is not a full review because we can't open raw files in Lightroom just yet. We do have a hands-on preview for you with all of the specs, but before I get into the specs, let me tell you what we shot. Canon set us up with a bunch of real-world shoots to test out both of these cameras, starting at Gatorland, where there's alligators, but a ton of birds right in front of your face. So that gave us a chance to test out both of these cameras, autofocus, and so much more. Then we went over to a skate park where they had a lot of skaters, but no Avril Lavigne. Avril wasn't there, Steven, was she? No. No, no Avril. I do wish Avril was there, but I've never seen a skate park like this. I didn't want to fall off and fall into the pool over there because that would have hurt. We also had volleyball and then we had indoor soccer. And when I was done shooting, I got to play a little goalie and I stopped a lot of balls. No, I, I really didn't. Now, all the footage that you're going to see on location was taken with the R7. Steven used that camera because it has IBIS in it and that's the one that we run and gunned with. All footage here, like right now, is done with the R5. And of course, wherever you see the autofocusing points in my electronic viewfinder, that was taken with either the R7 or the R10, recorded from the EVF. Now let's start with the specs of the R7. We'll get to the R10 second. It's very similar to a 90D slash 7D Mark II in that area, meaning that type of camera, sports, action, crop sensor, something fast, but something a little less expensive. It's like that, but in a mirrorless body. It has a new 32.5 megapixel cropped sensor with IBIS. It is not a stack sensor. The only stack sensor that they have is in the R3, and it is not a BSI sensor, but it is a new sensor. At least that's what Canon told us. Now, being that it is a cropped sensor RF body, it is a 1.6 magnification. So wherever you put a lens on, or whenever you put a lens on here, you magnify it by 1.6 X to get your 35 millimeter equivalent. And I noticed when I was shooting at F2 with a 28 to 70 f2 that it doesn't really give you the same effect as an f2 but we already knew that because it's a crop sensor and it's a little smaller now you have an rf mount this is a big mount just look at the opening here the sensor is really much smaller there but you have a big opening meaning you can take all rf lenses here this is the unification we've always been talking about that it would happen on the canon side kind of going away from the eos m that they say isn't discontinued yet and it's still going to be around, but you have the unified mount here, so your RF lenses can go onto both of these cameras. Now let's move into the ISO range. You have 100 to 32,000, expandable up to 51,200. Remember, when you have a smaller sensor, as you push to higher ISOs, you may start to run into some noise issues, but the key here is use better, faster glass, and you don't have to bump the ISO up as high. Now I shot soccer at 4,000 ISO, ISO and it looked fine even in the JPEGs. I know that the JPEGs look good and I know that the raw files when we can open them are going to look even better because I love to shoot raw. I still shot raw, but being that we can't open them yet in Lightroom, I can't show you that just now. Thus, another reason why it is not a review and it's just a preview. Now, what's kind of shocking is that you can get 15 frames per second with the mechanical shutter and you get 30 frames per second with the electronic shutter. Think about that, 15 frames a second. That's more than the R5 and the R6, but that's because it's a smaller sensor. 
you can shoot faster when there's less data to push around and then you get your 15 frames, which is really fast for sports or for tracking birds or for capturing birds or anything fast that you wanna capture. It's pretty amazing that you can do 15 frames a second. Now, 30 frames per second in the electronic shutter mode you're gonna still run into some warping. Just look at this soccer ball. That is pretty warpy. You are gonna get warping of fast moving subjects because you do not have that stack sensor. Now in a lot of situations, it's going to be fine. I was shooting at H in H+, which is the highest frame rate, giving me the 30 frames per second in electronic. If you slow it down and you're not shooting moving subjects and you're just wanting to shoot silent, then you're gonna be fine. You're not gonna have much of an issue there. It's those fast moving subjects that you might see some warping. Now inside of this camera, you have a Digic X processor. That's the same processor you find in the R5, the R6, in the R3, they're putting it into this camera. Not even putting, they already put it into this camera because it's already been done. That is a big deal. Why is it a big deal? Because it inherits the autofocus from the R3. Now, inheriting doesn't mean it's the same autofocus. It can't be the same autofocus because the R3 utilizes a stacked sensor, and this is just a regular CMOS sensor. Now, what inherited means is that they took a lot of the same algorithms and the things that they've learned from the R5 and the R6 and the R3 and incorporated it into this R7. And I can tell you that the autofocus is sticky. I shot it the same way that I would shoot an R3. I let the camera select the autofocusing points and lock onto the subject, whether it was a bird, whether it was a person, because you have animal AF, you have people AF, you can track vehicles, it works really well. And th this is something that's interesting and we'll have to test it out more in a full review, but I kind of feel like this autofocus is better than what you see in a Z9. Now I'm not saying that to upset Nikon shooters, I'm saying that because I've used it extensively, the Z9 and the R3 and the R5 and the R6, and now coming into the R7 and having the focusing points be sticky at a distance right on the eyeballs of a bird or be able to track a subject or lock onto them quickly when they enter the frame, I feel that it's better than what's in a Z9. Now we're gonna have to keep shooting more with that, but that's just how I feel using it because the R3 is amazing and the R7 inherits the R3's autofocus and already does a really fantastic job. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you this photo taken with the Canon R7 as a JPEG and edited with Fro Pack 3 starting with Fifth Element. Look how good that looks. Then we've got Canadian Tuxedo followed by Capone, which looks pretty damn awesome right here. Then we've got Gotham for People, which also looks really good, followed by Mentos and Mount Airy. But from Fro Pack 1, let's show you a couple like Silver Tide, gives you that really nice silver, black, and white. We've got Color Boomify, looks awesome. And then, of course, we've got Skittles right there. So look, if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow on the computer or on your mobile device, we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. If you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you want to get Fro Pack 1, 2, and 3 as the Fro Pack bundle, you can save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. In terms of memory cards, you have two slots that are UHS2 compatible with SD cards. I think that's fine that you have matching SD card slots. Would it be nice to see the CF Express Type B cards? Sure but it would probably add a lot more price. And to keep it down, look, you have two of the same, that's perfectly fine with me. You have a 2.36 million dot electronic viewfinder, as well as a three inch 1.62 million dot vary angle touchscreen. So those people who wanna vlog with it, who like the vary angle touchscreen, you yeah, got it. If you don't like it, you just leave it reversed and smacked in the back of the camera, which is how I personally like to shoot. But both of them are very nice. Nice EVF and nice touchscreen on the back. The body feels really substantially nice in the hands. It feels similar to an R6. It feels like an R5. It's just on the slightly smaller side, but it doesn't feel light. We'll get to the R10 in a minute. That thing feels light and a little more plasticky. This feels like a nice body 
in the hands. Now, if you're somebody who shot Canon for a while, you know they've always had a wheel that goes around your thumb that you can spin around for th certain things. They moved it to the top back of the camera. So you've got a joystick in the middle, and then you have this round thing that you can spin. That's where they moved it to. I don't think that's a problem. I think your, your brain picks it up really quick, and it's nice that it's all in one area. It's nice to have a joystick. It's nice to have the spinny dial. Now, in terms of connections and ports on the side, you have USB-C, you have a micro HDMI port, you have a headphone jack, and a microphone input jack as well as a digital hot shoe. The R5 right here doesn't even have the digital hot shoe, and this camera has the digital hot shoe for the accessories that it can accept, like microphones, that means you don't have to plug a cable into the side of the camera because it's digitally passing that information through that hot shoe into the camera. Now moving on to the video specs, we have 4K 30p, which is oversampled from 7K and you get a full width readout. You have 4K at 60 and you have 1080 at 120 frames per second. But a big deal that this camera has that this one doesn't have is that you have unlimited record time. That's right, the 30 minute or 2950 is gone. They told us you can get up to like six hours of record time and you're really limited by the size of your memory card and of course how much battery power you have. Now people always want to ask, will it overheat? Well, it was super hot out there in Florida. It was like 94 to 97 degrees when the sun was beating down on Steven shooting. He shot all day with the R7 and it did not overheat. Now he wasn't turning it off when he was not shooting. He left the LCD screen on while he wasn't shooting so it wasn't off taking a breather or taking a rest and cooling down and it did not overheat. So if it passes in that situation, that's real world. It's gonna pass in just about every other situation. For those of you who wanna shoot C-Log, you have C-Log 3, and there's also a new feature in this camera where when you wanna shoot vertical for those TikTok videos, those reels, or those shorts, that the camera writes into the file that you shot vertical. So when you bring it into the computer, it goes, hey, this is vertical video, and it's gonna bring it in in the vertical orientation already. Now, there's something called auto leveling using the IBIS for when you're shooting video. I believe they said it will correct up to three degrees of your tilt to try and get the level straight. It's not a feature that I personally will use, but we'll have to test it out when we get our hands on a new camera. Now, this was a full production unit camera, so it wasn't pre-production, so it's ready to go, and it's actually on 1.01 firmware, so if we had more time with it, we would call it a review, but not quite yet. We wanna take it into the real world here and not just in Florida to give it more of a test. In terms of battery, you have the LPE6NH, which is the same battery that you find in the R6 and the R5. It's a very good battery. You have weather resistance that is equal to the 90D, so it's good that you have that. Uh, the on-off switch, actually they, they switched how you get into video a little bit. It's on, it's off, and then it's video all on the switch. Not the same as the R5 and R6, which have it in the back that you can make a slight change. Now the price of the body is $14.99 for body only, $18.99 with the 18 to 150 RF kit lens that you could put on this. $14.99 isn't bad at all, and it's potentially going to be available in June, and anything can change because of chip shortages, but as of now, we are told June. $1,499 is not bad at all. That's $1,000 less than the R6, and you're getting a lot of great features like I just mentioned already. So who's this for? Look, if you're a birder who wants more bang for your buck with the 1.6X magnification, then this is a good option for you. 15 frames a second. That's a lot of frames per second that you're gonna get out of a camera. $1,499, that's pretty good for a mirrorless camera. This is a really solid option. Canon did not leave very much out of this camera at all. It is pretty much fully loaded and has some things that the R5 and the R6 does not have. So I was very happy with the results that I got out of this camera. At the end of this video, we're gonna run a slideshow of my favorite photos that I captured throughout the day of testing and I'm happy with the results that I got. Whether it was shooting at 100 ISO or 4000 ISO, it did exactly what it needed to do, and the autofocus is top notch. You buy cameras for image quality, you buy cameras nowadays for 
autofocus capability, and the autofocus capability is fantastic in this camera. Now let's move on to the R10. What's interesting are a lot of the features are shared between the R10 and the R7, so I'm gonna move through this a little quicker uh, because we already talked about a lot of the features. But what's different in the R10 is that it's much lighter. It definitely feels more plasticky. It feels like an SL3 or an SL2, more of a Rebel style camera because it just feels much lighter. It comes in at 0.94 pounds or 400 129 grams with the battery and the card in there. It definitely feels a lot more uh, inexpensive. I want to say cheap, but it definitely feels a little more inexpensive, but they need to have something in this price point and we'll get to the price point in just a second. Something different here is that you have a new 24.2 megapixel APS-C sensor. You have the 1.6X crop mode because it is the crop sensor. You can take RF lenses because it has the RF mount. ISO range is 100 to 32,000, max all the way up to 51,200. Again, I shot soccer at 4,000. What is interesting is there were times where, so we had the cameras taped up where we had the R7 an R10 logo covered up. A few times I was like, I think I'm shooting with the R7, but I'm actually shooting with the R10. You kind of forget about it because they work very similarly. The differences are really how they feel and a couple of these specs. Look, you get 15 frames per second with the mechanical shutter. You get 23 with the electronic. It dumbs it down just a little bit, probably because you're gonna blow through the buffer much quicker. You only have one slot for a UHS-2 SD card, which is, which is fine because you have the option to go with the R7 if you want two card slots. At least you have that option. Now, with an electronic shutter, you sometimes have the ability to shoot higher than the max frame rate for the mechanical shutter. The max frame rate is one four thousandth of a second. And what we were able to get when we were testing it out with the mechanical shutter was the same one four thousandth of a second. Now, when I was doing portraits at the skate park at one four thousandth of a second with a 1.2 lens, I really needed to be able to bump that up a little higher because I was at 100 ISO, I was wide open, and it was telling me that it was going to be a little overexposed, but I shot it anyway just to see what would happen, and the results are still good. The files look very nice. Now, I did outrun the buffer myself because I was shooting RAW plus JPEG fine. If I could just shoot RAW, I'd probably still outrun the buffer pretty quick, but you would get a few more extra shots if you're not doing JPEG at the same time. Now, what's cool is they added a joystick to the back of this camera. Usually in the price point that this camera's at or the you know the lower end side of it you don't have a joystick but having a joystick is nice to have it also inherits the autofocus from the R3 that's kind of insane that you have similar autofocus to a camera that's $6500 in a camera i'll just tell you now that's $979.99 again i feel like even in a camera like this based off of real world usage that it's similar if not better feeling than a Z9 because it just sticks, it just works. To have the systems where you have an R10, an R7, an R5, an R6, and an R3 all have amazing autofocus is great. And again, all that's because you have a Digic X processor. Even this lower end camera has a Digic X processor and the autofocus worked really well. There was a scene where there were four birds, I think it was four birds flying out at the Gator Land or Gator World, whatever it's called, where I was tracking with the 100 to 400 millimeter, I think it's a 5.6, I know it's up to an F8, it's a much slower lens because it's less expensive, but I was still tracking these birds flying 360 degrees around me and I was locked onto the bird. That's great autofocus. The fact that it can do that with one of the lower end lenses tells you that when you put the best glass on here or better glass on here, you're gonna get great autofocus even at this price point. Let me jump in here real quick and say that the Super Huger Mega Camera Giveaway for 2022 is currently live and I'm giving one of you the chance to spend $3,499 of my money on anything you want at Allen's Camera. To sign up for free right now, head on over to bit.ly slash Megafro22. Now there is no purchase necessary to win the grand prize, but if you do own Fro Pack 1, 2, or 3, or you purchase Fro Pack 1, 2, or 3, you will score extra entries towards winning the grand prize. Now let's get back to the video. To shave off some money, you don't have IBIS 
in this camera, but that's reflected in the price point. Now you do have a 2.36 million dot EVF that is tiny. Like your Thank you, Steven. Thank you for letting everybody know that. But the EVF is fine. Even though it's small, it's there. It does the job, Steven, okay? It gets the job done. At least it's there and they didn't get rid of it because there's a lot of people that thought they would get rid of EVFs in these lower end cameras. They didn't. So I like that. You have a three inch 1.04 million dot vary angle touch screen. If you want to vlog with it, you can do that. It flips out, it rotates, it's touchable. Thank you, Canon, for giving everybody the options they want. You could use it, or you don't have to use it. Now, the video is a little different in terms of video specs than the R7. You have 4K 30 oversampled from 6K with full pixel readout. You've got 4K 60 with a slight crop, 1080 120. Now, there's no headphone jack. You do have a microphone jack in here. You do have a digital hot shoe, correct, Steven? Yeah. Yeah, you do. You have the digital hot shoe even in this camera. I don't have that in the R5 right here. Now, they cut back. You don't have C log in this, and it is not weather sealed. Do not take it into the shower. It is not weather sealed. But you do have unlimited record time. Once again, no 2959, but a lot of your record time is limited to the battery, which is an LPE 17. They say you'll get about two hours of record time when you're shooting video. Now this battery is the same battery that you find in the EOS M lineup. So they're using that. I'd like to see a bigger battery, but this is how they keep weight down. And two hours of record time isn't bad at all. Now you do have a built-in flash. It's the first one of these types of cameras you have a built-in flash. You don't have it in the R7, you don't have it in the R5, the R6, or the R3. So that's more amateur -y, but at least if you're at the bar doing your thing or not at the bar and you want to take a flash picture, you take a flash picture, you have a manually pop-upable flash built in. Price, $979.99 for body only, $1099 with an 18 to 45 RF kit lens, and $1379 with an 18 to 1 50, and they say it's going to be available in July. Of course, anything can happen. As you know, it may be pushed back due to shortages, but at least they're telling us July. Who's this camera for? Well, it's for someone who doesn't want to spend the $1,499 on the R7, because the R7, I mean, would be my choice if I had to pick a crop sensor camera from Canon. I would go with the R7 over the R10, but for 500 bucks, you can add some nice glass to the front of it and get great results, because you have that awesome autofocus. Look, both of these cameras are stacked. At least in our testing, everything felt great in the real world. When we get our hands on it, we'll take it out into the real world here in Philly and do a full on review for you guys. But in terms of a preview, I'm happy with the results that I saw from autofocus to image quality to how the cameras felt and how they operated. The biggest thing for me is autofocus, as I said. So I think Canon did a fantastic job here with the R7 and the R10. We're looking at Nikon to come out with some cameras that can maybe match this. They got to get that autofocus better, put that Z9 autofocus into a crop sensor camera. And Sony hasn't done much in the way of crop sensor cameras in a long time. And if I had to choose a crop sensor camera today, I'm looking at the R7, I'm looking at the R10 over what Sony has to offer. So that's what I have to say here. Guys, we've got a slideshow coming up after I sign off. Let me know what questions you have down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button as well as that bell so you're notified when new videos come out. Thank you very much for watching. Jared, PolandFronosPhoto.com. See ya.